talk about Atmos mixes locked in the 714 compared to mixes that are dynamic and can scale the larger channel counts. So, um, well, the the larger channel counts would be in in the the way I understand the question. The 714 part of it is the output, right? So the yeah. channel counts coming in or the track counts um, are you know how many actual tracks do we have to work with how many multi-track channels are there right and then the output is this of 714 is the speaker configuration so we can mix to 714 724 726 926 like whatever the speaker configuration that we're mixing for um in music at 714 but the channel count coming in and the 128 object count is you know you can go as all the way up to that. So you it, it can be a you know a very, very active and very uh you know voluminous mix in terms of like what's there in terms of large, large scale. Um, it's just the playback is meant to be on you know the 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 reference standard of 714. W would you say that it really is also time dependent on how long a mixer has to actually play around with objects in space in three-dimensional space if they don't have a lot of time to do an atmos mix whether it's music or movies there might not be a whole lot of objects and that might might not be a whole lot of metadata so you might not your renderer might not go beyond the 714 as a result well if it doesn't go beyond the 714 it uh, as far as the output that you're sending to it right then everything is moving on the same plane yeah. right right because everything's in stereo beds um which sometimes sounds better you know you don't need the objects in that case as far as how you're going to move because the objects are specifically placing a sound in a specific location that is not locked into having to be in the different stereo beds so in right. other words, it's placing a sound where there, there might not be a speaker there, but it's using a couple of different speakers exactly. to make it sound like a, there's an object in that location. Exactly. And you can yeah. go, you know, anywhere in, in the plane of, you know, height, back, front, you know, uh, and front left, I mean, to back, right. Like you can, you can do anything that does, it's not just the linear pairs of like, here's my front left right here's my side left right here's my back left right like, like the pre atmos pre object based mixing you know every, you could still get a lot of immersive sound if you will but it doesn't compare to what you can do by changing you know heights and and moving objects anywhere in space and that's what you have 128 tracks um, yeah. objects right that you, so you have 128 different locations and movements that can happen from the multi-track that's being mixed yeah, and gotcha. i think what he's alluding to as well as the the classic example are some of those uh disney titles that were called at mouse because even though you may have had a 7.6 only four of the height channels were active so no matter what you did you wouldn't get let's say the middle height active mm -hmm. so I, I think that that might be the use case there sure and again it comes down to how it was mixed and you know what the well, you know, to your point, Gene, um, the the amount of time you have, of course, you have to be efficient. You know, you're if you're busy mixing engineer, there's a lot of mixes coming in, and you've got a certain yep. amount of time to do them. But I don't find that honestly. Um, you know, I, I have a pretty busy schedule of of mixing, and and I don't find um, that it's time that especially now you get experienced at it, you have a good understanding of what to do um with the mix to get it to where you want to get it um and you know it's it's really just creative license it's really just yeah what do, what yeah. do i think sounds the best on you know in immersive audio with everything considered the content i have to work with the stereo mix that i'm referencing um and you know and and all of the different down mixes what sounds the best 